10 Cool Facts About Pufferfish Did you know pufferfish are the most poisonous fish on Earth? They can change colors based on mood and are responsible for constructing these mysterious underwater crop circles. My name's Chris, and you can learn all about animals with me on Animal Science TV. Fact 10. Living Water Balloons Pufferfish normally look like this, with a thin tail and a cute box-shaped head. But when threatened, they will unhinge their jaw and gulp down an incredible amount of water. The pufferfish has no ribs and a folding stomach, so it can expand up to three times its original size in a matter of seconds, like a water balloon. It now appears more intimidating and hopefully is too big to fit into the mouths of any would-be predators. This defense adaption comes at a cost. The pufferfish's stomach does not help with food digestion, so their intestines have to do all of the work. Puffing above the surface will result in a stomach full of air, which can be difficult to burp out. Air in the stomach throws off buoyancy and is often fatal. 9. Like a chameleon The pufferfish shares two amazing traits with chameleons. The first trait is that both animals can move their eyes independently. Focusing on two objects at once, combined with 360 degree vision, is useful both while hunting and hiding. My dwarf puffer, Littlefish, could see me from across the room, and he always found me before I could find him. The second shared trait with chameleons is the ability to change colors. They mainly use this ability as an active camouflage to avoid predators. Hiding is much less stressful than blowing up is. Puffers can change from light to dark and from colorful to transparent. They also change colors based on their moods. 8. A vast diversity. There are over 120 species of pufferfish living around the world today. They come in all sorts of beautiful colors and sizes. They thrive in many different habitats. My pea puffer comes from the brackish tidal rivers of India and is less than one inch long. The giant Mbuna pufferfish patrols the freshwaters of the Congo River and can grow to over two feet long. The famous porcupine fish lives all around the globe in warm saltwater reef ecosystems. The only place none of the species can survive is in extremely cold waters. Pufferfish have no scales and instead they have special stretchy skin. It's rough and thick, but offers worse protection than standard fish scales, especially against poor water chemistry, microbes, and parasites. Some pufferfish, like the porcupine fish, have evolved sharp spines to help their defense, and they belong to the family Diodentidae. True pufferfish belong to the family Tetraodontidae and are more vulnerable. 7. Deadly Tetrodotoxin Pufferfish are the most poisonous fish living today. In fact, if you include all vertebrates, only the poison dart frog is considered to be more toxic to humans. Not very creatively, scientists named the neurotoxin found in the Tetraodontidae family Tetrodotoxin which is kind of a tongue twister, so we'll just call it TTX. The neurotoxin found in pufferfish is called TTX. TTX is 1,200 times more potent than cyanide. The average pufferfish contains enough TTX to kill 30 humans, and there's no antidote. TTX blocks cell signaling that normally occurs through voltage-gated sodium ion channels. A high enough dose will paralyze your diaphragm or heart, resulting in death. But 
Don't worry when you're swimming. Puffer fish have no way of injecting this poison into other animals. In fact, the only way to be poisoned by a puffer fish is to eat it. Puffers concentrate this neurotoxin in mostly the liver, sex organs, and skin. Six, becoming non-toxic and symbiosis. Until very recently, scientists thought pufferfish produced TTX using their own cells. But when puffers were grown in a closed, clean aquaculture system, or sometimes in aquariums, an interesting discovery was made. After several years, some populations became non-toxic. What was going on? Why would living in isolation cause a pufferfish to stop producing neurotoxin? Well, it turns out pufferfish do not actually produce TTX, even though it is named after them. Certain bacterium are the ones that actually synthesize TTX, but only in low, non-lethal concentrations. What is going on is that the TTX producing bacteria and the pufferfish are in a symbiotic relationship. The puffer is hosting the microbes in its gut. The bacteria gets a free share of the puffer's food, and in exchange, the pufferfish absorbs the bacteria's toxic waste. Pufferfish are immune to TTX and collect it as a deterrent. 5. Natural Predators Most animals will die or get very sick if they eat a pufferfish loaded with TTX. But most predators aren't very well educated when it comes to pufferfish. Tiger sharks are the most notorious hunters of the ocean-dwelling pufferfish. They can even eat the spiked porcupine fish variety. Tiger sharks are big enough to swallow it even when inflated, and they are immune to the neurotoxin. Eels can also tolerate TTX, but they are a smaller predator and the pufferfish might get stuck in their throat. Some snakes can eat smaller species of puffers, they evolved resistance in the past during an evolutionary arms race with newts. Newts contain the same poison as pufferfish. Overall, pufferfish are hard to observe in nature, and any animal who enjoys eating fish could swallow a puffer if the inflation defense doesn't scare it off. Poison just isn't a very good defense because some predators might not know that you're poisonous. Interestingly, Dolphins have been seen gently chewing on a pufferfish and passing it to their friends. It is thought that low doses of TTX from the puffer's skin induce a euphoric high feeling in dolphins. 4. Fugu Of course, humans had to figure out a way to eat pufferfish. In Japan, fugu is an exotic pufferfish meal served at expensive restaurants. TTX is not naturally concentrated in the muscles, so chefs simply serve the raw white meat. Usually it's thinly sliced and laid out on a fancy plate. It's also sometimes served like sushi. Traces of neurotoxin in the meal sometimes gives people a numb and tingling feeling in their mouth, but most people enjoy fugu for the excitement of eating a potentially deadly item. TTX is tasteless, colorless, and odorless to humans. The molecule can't even be destroyed by cooking, so every year a few people die eating pufferfish. Some clever restaurants cheat to guarantee safety. Remember those aqua farms with the non-toxic pufferfish? Also, fugu is usually served in the wintertime when pufferfish are less toxic. But why are pufferfish less toxic in the winter? 3. Spawning and underwater crop circles The breeding season is during summertime. Puffers are extra toxic during this time because a strong scent of TTX is an attractive mating quality. The male Torquegener pufferfish has an even better way to attract females. He digs a mysterious crop circle in the sand. Its geometry is mesmerizing, and it seems unnatural or alien. 
Can you think of any other complex geometric structures built by animals? The first one that comes to my mind is the honeycomb. If the male built a good crop circle, a female will come by and lay eggs in the center. He then externally fertilizes them and defends the nest until they hatch. Other species perform mating dances or show off their colors. Some attach eggs to seaweed and others allow the eggs to free float on the surface. Two, beaks and diet. Like a hamster, puffer fish have four ever-growing teeth. The top two are fused together into wide teeth plates. The bottom two are also fused, forming a false beak. Because these teeth grow forever, a puffer fish needs to be constantly grinding them down. If the teeth grow too long, they can seal the mouth shut, resulting in starvation. Overgrown teeth are common in pet pufferfish whose owners didn't provide enough hard foods or shells in the diet. In the wild, pufferfish are omnivores. They like to eat small fish, clams, coral, crabs, snails, shrimp, algae, worms, and other invertebrates. Hopefully, one of these prey items is carrying some living TTX producing bacteria so the puffer can start to become toxic. And one, strange swimmers. For a fish, puffers are quite slow swimmers, but they are very maneuverable. They're more like a hummingbird than like an eagle. They beat their little pectoral fins so fast that you can barely see them flapping. The big tail is usually folded and curled up to help with turning. At slow speeds, they can swim forwards and backwards. They can also rotate on any axis. This stealthy movement allows them to use those chameleon eyes to precisely snatch a snail right out of its shell or to ambush a passing fish. Pufferfish are not streamlined for high speeds, and if they puff, everything gets worse. When filled with water, a pufferfish can barely do anything because it now weighs about three times its previous weight. Too much mass for those little fins to push along. The pufferfish's slow swimming speed and relative fearlessness of humans make it one of my favorite diving buddies. There are a bunch more cool animal fact videos on my channel here. And this video was made possible by our Patreon pets. If you learned something, please give me a like for the YouTube algorithm. And I'll see you next time on Animal Science TV.